All right, researchers, in today's educational and totally hypothetical demo, we're walking you through how researchers typically reconstitute a lyophilized powdered vial of retitrutide using bacteriostatic water. All for research and entertainment purposes only. This is not medical guidance, not instructions for human use, and not advice of any kind. We're just demonstrating technically how researchers handle these materials in a lab setting according to common research practices. Before anything begins, researchers prepare a work service, and that means sanitizing the entire working area, washing hands thoroughly, and laying out supplies. We have insulin syringes, bacteriostatic water, alcohol prep pads, and the lyophilized research vial of retitrutide. Now, this just came out of the freezer, and it is good to warm and to room temperature in case you just get it fresh out of the freezer, freezer like I did. Now for educational purposes, researchers use a simple guideline. Mix 100 units of backwater and per 10 milligrams of retitrutide. This is a retitrutide 30 milligram vial and we will mix three 100 unit syringe fulls into this vial to constitute it as 100 units of backwater per 10 milligrams of retitrutides. Start with drawing out air because it makes it easier. Injecting air into the bottle helps remove the suction that naturally occurs and generally helps the liquid come out quicker. But it does take a while, so we wait patiently. Now your air bubbles aren't gonna matter as much whenever you are reconstituting. So we'll take our peptide and you'll notice there's a window right here. And it's solid all the way around and it has one window on this vial and some vials have more than one window it has one on each side but this one only has that one window so we'll make sure we are in the window and you will know because there's a suction so you see it pushing it it's already putting itself in there and so we won't push too hard but we'll let it go down and we'll get our first syringe full in there and we'll repeat this process so we will put air and there's a center like a bullseye hit it right in the middle put in the air and then drying out one another 100 units If you get more than 100, you just push, push it in back into the bottle and we will get another 100 units injected. Find the window. And it's easy to bend the needle, so you'll have to just kind of make sure you get it in there without bending it too much. Now, we will do it angled so that the back water slides down the side of the vial and this helps from preventing foaming or direct spraying onto the powder, which keeps the peptide more stable. Since we are injecting a 30 milligram vial, researchers will inject 300 units of total back water and we are on Syringe full number three. So this would be our 300. Inject the air. 
pulling out another 100 units of bacteriostatic water. And this is the brand that we like. It seems to have the highest ratings and reviews and, and highest testing standards, even though it comes from Pfizer. We like this one. Might be the only thing from Pfizer we like. All right, now we are on number three. Find a window, bullseye. You can see it in there, which is how we like it. Now, once all the back water is inside, we will gently roll yeah we will gently roll the vial between our fingers not shake it peptides should become completely dissolved and you see the reditrutide normally dissolves well and quickly and it is clear free of specks and cloudiness if not fully clear we will continue to roll Now, to maintain stability, the reconstituted peptide is stored in the refrigerator. Backwater, on the other hand, will stay at room temperature just to keep it directly out of sun. I mean, just store it in a cabinet or somewhere out of direct sunlight. For best potency, researchers typically use a peptide within 60 days. After that, it begins to slowly lose its concentration. 